Well, to break down today's market action, joining me now is Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Uh, Melissa, wrapping up a busy day on the floor of the Stock Exchange. What are you watching in today's session? Well, it's very interesting because we were down this morning. If you get up really early, 4 a.m., 5 a.m., market was down huge this morning. I don't know if that was because of last night, because of the debate reaction, but then we had good economic data this morning and the market ended up opening much, much higher. And then we had this huge lift during the day and then we completely sold off. And right now, as we're talking, we are really selling off. <laughs> just, just in the last two minutes since we closed, we're selling off after hours. So I think this market has been a wild ride, but overall, September was an extremely busy bearish, uh, bearish, bearish month for the market. You could not take any long positions and see any follow through during the month of September. If you were short, if you were an active trader, then you made money during the month of September. Mm -hmm. So what do, we, what do we expect, Melissa, for the month of October as we still await the election? More chop? I think we're going to be back and forth within a range. The range could widen or we're going to be lower. I do not think we make brand new outcome highs before the election. Low odds that would happen anyways, what would be the reason? Unless for some reason we have a vaccine, and I don't necessarily think we will before the election. That's really out of everyone's control except for the pharmaceutical companies. And they have to go through the necessary testing. They may be close. We may have one uh, before the end of the year and not out to the public, but there may be one that gets through before the end of the year. But I don't think it's going to be before the election. And don't forget, earnings season starts at the end of October, right into that tail end of October, into the beginning of November, right up against when the election period is. If you see some good earnings in Apple, Amazon, some of these big tech companies, then you might see a significant rally into the end, the end of October, beginning of November. But I think it's going to be a close call here to look for new highs anytime again soon. Okay, um, let's talk about the IPO market. Melissa, two direct listings here on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Today, Palantir and Asana, two software companies. September, the busiest month for IPOs ever uh, for the New York Stock Exchange, despite the pandemic. Any of these companies that have gone public this month, including Unity Software, the gaming platform company, uh, Snowflake, another software company, do any of them look attractive to you? I don't really buy these things or short these stocks because I consider them very speculative. It's something if you want to get in them, you have to hold them for the long term. And one dropped today and one rallied today. So you really can never be sure exactly what's going to happen with these. So I would really just stay away from these unless you really believe they're software data analysis companies. Both of them are software companies, unless you really think they have a lot of potential to go higher. The prices, though, we're, we're on the on the low end. If you look at some of the IPOs and some of the new issues that came out this year that have been astronomically uh, high priced when they when they came out. So these are affordable price points if you want to buy in that nine ten dollar range or the twenty some dollar range per share. Hmm. Uh, the worst September since twenty eleven, Melissa. I know you said a lot of chop here is on the horizon. Do investors care about coronavirus cases? We see COVID picking up double digits around the United States. Is that a worry? Has that yet been priced into these markets? I think the problem is that people are concerned if Biden would get elected, he pretty much has already said that he, he would do another shutdown. And if the cases continue to climb and he wins, and he wins then I think markets would react very negatively to that. Now, if Trump wins, he already said he's not going to do another shutdown. And so I think the, the market would react positively, positively to a Trump re-election. Now, that being said, when you look at what's going on right now with all of the people that are unemployed, all of the people that are out of work, from state to state, it varies so much. For example, here in New York, most of New York, in New York City, is still shut down. It is unbelievable to me how much of this city is still shut down. So when you go down to Florida, now Florida reopened. They're completely open now. All the businesses can open. So obviously they're going to have less people now in unemployment. So it really varies a lot from state to state. But a lot is going to depend on the stimulus bill. The market could have a positive reaction if a stimulus bill gets passed. But again, it's a more than a month away from the election. I think it's low odds a stimulus bill gets passed before the election. Could it happen? Sure. But they can't seem to agree on anything. Trump wants, doesn't want to spend more than $1.2 trillion. Uh, the House wants to spend, Nancy Pelosi wants to spend $2.2 trillion, So they're off about $1 trillion. Also, I don't know if anyone's read the specifics, but they want to not, there's some different things in this new stimulus package. They're actually going to give stimulus checks to people now that are non-citizens. 
And I don't know if Republicans are going to pass that or not. In other words, before you had to file a tax return in 2019 in order to qualify for the stimulus. Now they're opening up to 2018, 2019. And they're also opening up to people that have something called a tax identification number. It's, it's called a TIN number. You may be here in a visa legally, or you might be here illegally in the United States, in which case you would be able to get a stimulus check as an illegal alien in the U.S. from the government. And I think that is not going to be something that the Republicans are necessarily going to agree to. And that is something that the Democrats are pushing as well. So we're looking at, Melissa, just to wrap up the month here, it is the end of September. Uh, markets have officially closed for the month. It was very choppy. The first month of losses for the major indices since going back to March when the pandemic at first set in here and we saw lockdowns across the country. The major indices down 2% for the Dow, 4% for the S&P 500, and worse than 5% for the NASDAQ. So certainly off of our lows, but still declines uh, that we haven't seen in about six months or so. The debate last night wasn't a wildly market-moving event. Are the... Uh, two upcoming presidential debates, potential market moving events for you. The market moving events really is going to be the vaccine. If the vaccine, whenever that happens, if it's 2020, early 2021, I believe the market's going to have a very, very bullish reaction to that. Other than that, the market's going to just chug along. I think there's a possibility we could sell off down in the March lows, and I don't know when that could happen, but it definitely could. If the cases continue to increase, and if Biden gets elected, and again, because of the scare of another shutdown, then we could go down to where we were for the March lows. And that would be very scary for a lot of people. Not that the market wouldn't turn around, not that the market wouldn't make new highs again, but I think that's a real possibility because no one knows what's going to happen come election time. Wow. Okay. That's the first call, I guess, Melissa, that I've heard that we could retest those uh, March 23rd lows. We got to leave it there. I wish we had more time. Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Uh, thanks for joining.